This is the story of Oliver and Company. You can read along with me in your book. You will notice time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. Oliver the kitten sat on a busy street corner in New York City, alone and hungry. Mmm, what's that wonderful smell? Hey, there's a man selling sausages. As Oliver started forward, a dog stepped in his path. Oliver jumped back. Get away from me! Whoa, chill out, man. I don't eat cats. Too much fur. You know, I've been watching you. And I think you're in serious need of some professional guidance. What do you say we team up and get some of those hot dogs? Oliver nodded eagerly. The dog moved in rhythm to a car horn. You see, kid, the city's got a beat. Once you hook into it, you can do anything. I can? Absolutely, absolutely. Suddenly, the dog let out a growl. Frightened, Oliver scrambled up the sausage man's chest. In the confusion, the dog grabbed a string of hot dogs and raced off. Oliver called after him. Hey, when do we eat? The dog laughed and kept going. Angry, Oliver followed him. In an old barge across town, a gang of dogs compared what they had found that day. Einstein, a Great Dane, proudly showed a broken tennis racket to a Chihuahua. Tito, look what I got. You call that loot, man? Here, check out this designer wallet. A bulldog looked up from his TV set. Ooh, shredded leather. Rita, an Afghan hound, strutted up to the bulldog. So, Francis, you got the food? It was your turn today. Well, no. Francis hung his head sheepishly. Just then, the door opened, and in sauntered the dog with the sausages. Here you go, gang. Hot dogs a la Dodger. Tito scampered around excitedly. How'd you do it, Dodger? Picture the city, 8th and Broadway, and a Dodger, one cool puppy. And in the opposition, a psychotic monster with sharp claws and dripping fangs. He comes at me, eyes burning. Suddenly, there was a crash, and an object came hurtling through the ceiling. Tito raced around in circles. Gang war! Gang war! Watch out! The object climbed out of a laundry pile where it had landed. It was Oliver. He'd been watching the dogs through a hole in the ceiling. I I'm sorry. I just want my sausages. Rita laughed. Sir Dodger, this is your monster? Hey, Dodger man, let's see the big bag kitty fighter in action. Tito took a running leap and landed on top of Dodger. Einstein grinned and jumped in. Oh boy, a dog pile. Suddenly, the door burst open and Oliver dove for cover inside a box. In strode Fagin, the dog's master. Sykes will be here any minute. Oh, why? Why did I ever borrow money from that man? Now he's saying he'll kill me if I don't pay him back. Okay, gang, where's today's loot? Fagin dug through the loot box and found Oliver. A pussycat. I'm supposed to pay Sykes with a pussycat? At that moment, Sykes pulled up in a black limousine with two snarling watchdogs. You have three days to pay me back, Fagin, or else somebody, somebody like you, might get hurt. One of the watchdogs noticed Oliver, and his eyes glinted. He lunged, but Oliver swiped his claw across the watchdog's nose. The dog backed away, then left. Dodger grinned proudly at Oliver. What did I tell you guys? Old Dodge can really pick him, huh? Fagin staggered back into the barge and collapsed in a chair. Three days. I'll never get the money by then. Rita licked Fagin's chin, and Francis hurried off to get some slippers. Einstein brought a book. Fagin began to feel better. All right, Einstein, I'll read to you. But only one chapter. 
Once upon a time, there was a dog named Sparky. Oliver sighed, snuggled up next to Dodger, and fell asleep. The next day, Fagin loaded the gang onto the back of his motor scooter and drove downtown. Dodger, keep an eye on the cat. And remember, we need money, or else... Dodger was ready for action. Okay, gang, let's try a chauffeur shuffle. See that limousine coming up the street? Here's the plan. Einstein, give me a fender bender. Tito, you're in charge of electronics. Cat, you stick with Tito and try to help. Inside the limousine, a little girl named Jenny was reading a letter from her parents. She turned to the chauffeur. Oh, Winston, I don't think they'll make it home for my birthday. As the limousine rounded a corner, Einstein leaped out and banged into its side. The car screeched to a stop, and Winston jumped out. Oh, you poor dog. What have I done to you? Meanwhile, Tito scrambled into the car and began chewing through the radio wires. Come on, kitty. You be the lookout. When Oliver jumped in, he accidentally bumped the key and started the car. Tito fled, but Jenny saw Oliver and picked him up. Poor little kitty. I'm going to take you home. Winston got back into the limousine and they pulled away. Tito and Dodger followed until the car stopped in front of an elegant mansion. Oh, man, Dodger, they got the kid. We got to bust him out of there. Don't worry, Tito. We will. Absolutely, positively. Inside the house, Jenny cooked breakfast for Oliver. I bet you're starved, huh? Here, you can use Georgette's ball. She poured the food into a gold dish. When Jenny left to answer the phone, a fluffy lavender poodle sashayed into the room, frowning in disgust. Do you happen to know whose bow you're eating out of? Oliver gulped. Someone named Georgette? Yes, just like everything else in this house. It's mine! A moment later, Jenny rushed back into the kitchen. Guess what, kitten? My parents say I can keep you. Isn't it wonderful, Georgette? You two are going to be such good friends. Jenny took Oliver to a fancy jewelry shop where she picked out a gold pendant. I'm having it engraved, kitten, with your name, Oliver, and your new address, 1125 Fifth Avenue. That afternoon, Oliver watched Jenny practice piano. He felt like he was really somebody's friend. It was almost too good to be true. The next day, while Jenny was at school, the gang crept into the mansion and went up to Jenny's room where they ran into Georgette. So, you mutts are here to rescue your kitten? I'd be delighted to help you. This cat's cramping my style. When Rita noticed how happy Oliver looked, asleep on Jenny's bed, she had second thoughts. But Georgette was already picking up Oliver. She stuffed him into a pillowcase. Now get going, mutts. Hurry, use the fire escape. The dogs took Oliver back to the barge. When they let him out of the bag, he looked up sadly at Dodger. I was really happy there. Why'd you guys take me? Hey. This place not good enough for you anymore, kid? Don't want to mix with the riff raff? No, I like everyone in the gang. But there's a little girl in... Dodger, I just want to go back. Fine, no one's stopping you. Just then, Fagin walked through the door and picked up the kitten. I got two hours left, pussycat. How can I ever pay off Sykes? Fagin noticed Oliver's gold tag. Fifth Avenue? So that's where you've been. Your owner's probably worth millions. Fagin grabbed a pen and paper. Your tag gave me a brilliant idea, kitten. Let's see. Dear pet owner. <laughs> Dear rich pet owner. When Jenny received Fagin's ransom note and map, she didn't waste a minute. Come on. Georgette, we have to rescue Oliver. She took the reluctant poodle and hurried through the dimly lit streets. At last, she rounded a corner and saw Fagin. Excuse me, sir. I'm lost. You see, 
I came to find my kitty. Your kitty? Where was Oliver's rich owner? Yes. You see, somebody stole him, and I brought my piggy bank to get him back. It's all I have. Fagin's plan had failed, and to make matters worse, the little girl was starting to cry. Fagin took Oliver out of his pocket. Look, I found a little lost kitten. Maybe he's yours. Oliver! At that moment, a car started toward them. It was Sykes. Zooming past, he opened his door and pulled Jenny inside. Don't be afraid, little girl. Your parents will pay plenty to get you back. Oliver watched the car speed away. They took Jenny! But Dodger and the gang were already off and running. Don't worry, Cat. She's your friend, so we'll get her back. Oliver, Georgette, and the gang followed Sykes to his warehouse, where they crouched outside the door. They could see Jenny tied to a chair inside an office, with Sykes looking on. When he stepped away, Dodger nudged Francis. You go in first and keep an eye on the monitors. Make sure the coast is clear. A moment later, Dodger and the others slipped inside the office. Oliver jumped into Jenny's lap. Oh, Oliver. They untied her and hurried to the loading door. But when they opened it, Sykes was standing outside. The party's over, dogs. Suddenly, there was the sound of a sputtering motor. Climb on board, everyone! It was Fagin on his scooter. He gunned the engine and raced past the startled Sykes. Watch your heads, gang! We're going for a little ride on the subway! Georgette watched in horror as Fagin clattered down the station entrance and right onto the subway tracks. But as the scooter gathered speed, he turned around. Sykes is right behind us! He's crashing into the scooter! Jenny, look out! The collision had knocked Jenny onto the foot of Sykes' car. Oliver and Dodger leaped onto the limousine to help out. There was a blast of cold air as the scooter and car emerged onto the Brooklyn Bridge. Jenny held onto the hood ornament on Sykes' car. There's a train coming! Right at us! Mr. Fagan, help! Fagan leaned backward and with a tremendous yank pulled Jenny back onto the scooter. At the same instant, with the train inches away, he swerved and drove up onto the bridge railing. Jenny screamed and covered her face. The train hit Sykes' limousine, and the car sank into the river with Oliver and Dodger on it. The gang peered down from the bridge, but they saw only rushing water. Several long moments passed. Then there was a noise behind them, and Dodger stepped out from the shadows. In his mouth, he held a limp, lifeless kitten. Jenny raced over. Oliver, please be all right. The little kitten slowly opened his eyes and looked up at her. Jenny pulled him close. Oh, Oliver. The next day, the whole gang was invited to Jenny's house for a birthday party. After she thanked them for her gifts, Oliver followed Dodger outside. Thanks for everything, Dodger. Take care of yourself, kid. And if you ever need anything, you'll know where to find me. Oliver smiled at his friend. Absolutely, positively. <laughs>